what's happening everyone welcome to our live stream where we're going to be checking out bloom now the reason why i figured i'd switch this up and take a look at bloom is because there it is generating a ton of waves in the machine learning community right now and i really wanted to have a chat to you about it because i feel like you should at least be having a look at it and sort of getting up to speed i know a lot of you guys frequently ask me how do i stay up to speed on all these new models and what's coming up to speed I, I figured hey why don't i just show you some of the models that i'm currently looking at right now one of those is the bloom model now we're actually going to take a look at the history behind it and a little bit of background as to what it is and why you should maybe be paying attention to it and then we'll try to test it out on transformers so or through hugging face i've tried to get it up through collab it's literally been downloading for lord knows how long it's still downloading as i watch it on my screen right now so i can show you that i don't know if it'll actually get there but we shall see anyway hopefully you guys enjoy this one we'll dig into it and, and see where this goes who knows um if you like me doing breakdowns of live models do let me know or bigger models or models that are up and coming in the community let me know and maybe we'll do a little bit more of this that being said it's a friday so kick back relax and maybe just enjoy the ride and we'll see how we go Alrighty, so bloom let's go take a look so this is the bloom blog and it was trained i believe in collaboration with a team from big science which i think has got a or it's in partnership with hugging face but um, let's have a quick read of this. So it is the world's largest multilingual. I oh know the zoom's not working. Nope. The dude doesn't want to play. Anyway, it is the world's largest open multilingual language model and it's called Bloom. Now, you've probably heard of a couple of other really big open language models, namely the biggest one that you've probably heard about is GPT-3. Um, this is obviously one of the others There's obviously, I think there's a Microsoft one as well. I can't remember if you want me to take a look at it, let me know. Um, but the crazy thing is that it's been trained with 176 billion parameters. It's killing me that this is not plugging in and working. Let's try another USB port. Oh, all right. I give up. What I'm talking about is this little trackpad. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. You never know. Um, but yeah, so it's been trained on 176 billion parameters. It's worked with over 100 researchers from 70 countries, 250 institutions. Kind of crazy. Um, and if you actually went to the Twitter handle for the big science team, they were actually posting live updates as they were training this model. So it's kind of crazy. Um, and the fact that it's open source is, is now absolutely nuts. The other nuts thing is that it was trained on this supercomputer and I was taking a look at this. So it's in the south of Paris or south of Paris in France. And it took a grant of 3 million euros from these French research agencies to sort of fund this kind of crazy. And they've made it open source. Isn't that nuts? Like that, that anybody can go and take a look at, at playing with this. Um, this is what we're going to do. So looks like uh so we're finalizing an inference api for large scale use even without dedicated hardware but this is saying that you potentially need eight a100s to play with it eight a100s nuts what's an a100 worth a100 gpu seven wait is that right no that's an a6000 a100 15 g's 15 g's Who's having eight of those? So sometimes I talk about like I, one of the guys actually asked in the AMA about the limits of machine learning and whatnot. It's kind of crazy because hardware and infrastructure definitely does play into this, especially when you're trying to build some of these monster models. You like to, to build some of this type, type of stuff. It's just absolutely nuts. Anyway, there's a little bit. I'll, I'll include a link to this in the chat if you guys want to go and take a look. How you doing, Ishan? I just realized I've been doing this entire thing with the microphone over here. Can you still hear me? Oh, you can. It is still picking up. Who knows? We'll see where that goes. Alrighty, cool. So let's go and take a look at 
Loom. So this is what I was sort of messing around with. So inside of, you can access this through Hugging Face and if you got a big science Bloom, so I'll drop the link in the chat. So you can actually test it out and you can just write some generation and, and it'll start generating stuff. So um, we can obviously switch between how it generates. So we can either choose to use sampling, which you would have noticed me uh, taking a look at when we were doing, what is it that we were doing? When I was building the language translation model. So you can obviously have a sa use sampling techniques to go and generate text, or you can just use a greedy algorithm, which will just take the most, the highest likelihood logic and, and use that as the, the prediction. So we could type in, um, wish I could zoom. Uh, Python is the greatest language alive and hit compute and it's computing how nuts is that i still find this absolutely brilliant trying to unplug that in see if we can get the zoom working there we go all right we're good python is the greatest language alive or you want to use some function from a package like matplotlib, it is really important. I mean, that's generating. Kind of cool, right? Guys, give me some prompts. What else? How you doing, Daniel? Welcome to the stream. What else can we type in? Uh, I don't know. So what are some of the examples that we had here? So the gray bit is the input and the output is the pink bit. So the input, is that right? Have they got that switched up? So they're saying they input the particle at the end of, let's try it, I don't know. The particle at the end of the universe. Take a look at that. 2003 on the same subject, which is probably less useful to the general general public. If we generate from there. Machine learning live stream. Yeah. Welcome to it. Turbo, how you doing? Oh, sorry. It's stopping there. What happens if we go with a greedy prompt or using greedy techniques? Nothing. Interesting. So, I mean, this is still in its infancy and it's only just been published. Like it is still ridiculously new, uh, but I figured I wanted to show you guys what is, um, what's out there at the moment. Cause it is ridiculously awesome. We'll take a look at some of the spaces. This is a question I read on Quora and had some doubt. I am posting the, mm, interesting. I haven't played around with transformers for quite a while. We haven't done any tutorials. Choose a problem corresponding to a template. Generate text. Oh, I like this. You can actually just choose a question. So is this the prompt? Or don't select and enter your own prompt. Oh, this is cool. So who was this from? This space is created by uh, Yuvraj Sharma. Awesome work, man. So you can actually pass through a prompt. So choose a sample problem and corresponding template for zero shot COT. So Roger has five tennis balls already. He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have now? And then if I say first, what would happen then? Wait, hold on. A juggler said that, is that what we passed through previously? If I go and hit generate text, what happens? Roger has five tennis balls already. He buys two more cans of, can you see I say that or is my text blocking it? He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have now? First, we need to know how many cans of tennis balls Roger has. We know that he has five tennis. All right, so it's capped off there. I saw the other day, so Daniel, I saw the other day a guy typing in find a max value from one, two, three with Python and it returned 
NP max of those numbers. Let's try it. Um, find. So down here, find the and the what did you say? The max minimum value from one to three with Python. Let's hit generate. Wait, are we getting the output? Let's grab this and throw it over here. This is the first time I've played with it as well, guys. So it's a uh, exploration. Uh, I wonder if it was going to keep going. So the, the thing with this is I think you're limited with how much it actually generates. If I said greedy. We shall see. Anyway, I figured I'd show you as well. Oh no, we've almost used up all the memory on the thing. So this is me trying to download it. You can see it's downloading an absolute ton of stuff, but I don't think it's feasible to use this on a, um, on a standard machine. That's why these guys... Oh, there you go. Daniel, take a look at this. You seeing it? So it's saying, find, so we've set asked Vert how to find, find the maximum value from one, two, three of Python. How can I find the maximum value in a list of numbers, e.g. list, and then they've passed it through as an array. So one, two, three with Python, and then no, no, max list. Take a look at that. That's actually really, really cool. I've, I mean, that's a great example. This is part of the fun reason that I like doing live streams because I'm learning as well. That's actually kind of interesting. Anyway, I figured I'd keep this one pretty short. I was going to do a long stream on a Friday, but ain't nobody want to sit around on a Friday and watch just generic machine learning stuff. Um, that is Bloom. So if you want to do, go and check it out. It's uh, go and take a look at the links in type roses, red, violets, blue. All right, let's give it a crack. Last one before bell. Uh, roses. Uh, red, violets, uh, blue. Uh, blue also i just finished downloading forza horizon 5 so i'm gonna be doing a gaming session after this not live streamed but that's the game plan <laughs> roses are red violets are blue ish and the leaves are green <laughs> The leaves are arranged in a spiral pattern. So I think if we went to sampling, we'd get a bit more of a, uh, like a creative output. Oh, wait, so this is generating on. So I, wait, can we just keep hitting generate? Because I plugged in a big chunk of text and eventually it capped out. The red maple is a native. All right, take a look at this. So is roses are red. Let's go back and do that Python example. So roses are red, violets are bluish, and the leaves are green. The leaves are arranged in a spiral pattern. The leaves are flat and oval shaped. They're toothed along the edges. There are several types of maple trees. I don't know. That's just completely gone, gone off, off the reservation. If we type in um, return... Or what did you have? Uh, so find the max value of the numbers one, two, three, four, five with Python. So if we keep hitting generate or compute, I wonder what else we'd get.
I would like to know if you can create a script that can run a SQL query that will add a column to a table. I'm currently, okay, this is going a little awry, but it is talking about stuff. Uh, how do I zoom in so I can get this without the chat covering it? All right, this is, let's delete this. Let's go greedy. I've cleared it. What are you talking about? That should be, shouldn't be too long. So you can see if you pass through a giant prompt, you get this. This is a very long prompt. We're temporarily not accepting these. So just something to keep in mind if you are going to be testing this out. Okay. I'm trying to find the max value of the numbers. One, two, three, four. Is he going to finish it with five and then so on? Just dropped water all over myself. <laughs> using Python, I've tried using Impt as an example and it didn't work. still kind of cool it's generating coherent text i always find these absolutely amazing like it's nuts how difficult it is to train these models like i'm doing the language translation transformer model at the moment and it is let me tell you it's here we go def max x return x and then wait are we finishing there is it going to keep going print max This would need to be tweaked a little bit, but you can see it's actually generating code. That's actually awesome. Take a look at that. I think that's brilliant. I mean, open source model, who knows? I wonder if we'll be able to get access to different models as time goes on. And Distill Bird is actually going to get really, really interesting as well. But um, yeah, anyway, I figured we'd have a chat about this. Take a look. We're going to be doing a bunch more live streams or at least actually, I don't know if we are going to be doing a ton of live streams next week because I'm traveling, but who knows? We'll see what content we get up to. Anyway, guys, I figured I'd do a live stream and uh, have a chat to you guys about Bloom because I think it's really interesting and you'll see that a lot of people are talking about it at in the industry today. Highly recommend you go and take a look at a couple of those links because there's some awesome information behind those as well as some of the innovation that is happening in the natural language processing space using large language models. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Got no questions. Peace. I'll catch you later. Have an awesome weekend. Take a little bit of a break. Enjoy. I'll catch you later. Peace.